hello and welcome to today's yoga question. I'm Lizzie Lassiter. Joining us is Erica Morton McKill, who has a lot of thoughts about Shavasana, which is perfect <laughs> for this segment because our question of the day is, what is the history of Shavasana? Sure. So Shavasana in the Hatha yoga tradition, which is sort of where most of the practices that we do today come from, first appeared in the Dattatreya Yoga Shastra. Uh, in the text, and that's a 13th century text. And it appeared as a method of laya yoga, so a method for dissolving the mind into the absolute. And it was a secret method, a samketa. And it didn't appear as a pose until the Hatha Pradipika, which was a compilation of texts. And that was written by Swatmarama uh, and compiled in 1450. And so it appears there as a pose for the first time where it actually has therapeutic benefit and it kind of looks like the pose that we know today. The definition is lying supine on the ground like a corpse is Shavasana. It gives rest to the mind and combats fatigue. And that was sort of the basic definition in the Hatha Pradipika. Um, from then onward, most Hatha texts replicate that basic template. Um, there are some variations and something that I think is interesting is that first text, Shavasana is really hands by the side and down towards the knees, right? So it's kind of more contained towards the midline than we generally practice Shavasana today. Um, I don't know about you, Lizzie, but I kind of take like a starfish pose. Um, and that doesn't really appear until the 17th century in the Hatha Ratnavali. And then there's a couple other variations. There's a variation where you lie with your hands on your chest and you look at the tip of your nose and think of Shiva. Um, and then there's another variation where you lie with your arms up overhead. Um, but basically we're replicating the same template until modernity, at which point it starts getting a little, little different. Okay. I want to ask you two questions. I want to follow that thread. How does it get different in modernity? But I also wanted to ask what relationship or what sense do you have in like 1500 when it's in the Hatha Yoga Pratipurka? What does it have to do with death? Is that really a foreground element of the pose? No, it's more like a simile. So it's lying on the ground like a corpse. So there isn't, it doesn't expand upon the corpse aspect of it. And I do think that's something that is later expanded upon. And there are sort of precedents for thinking about death and lying down or contemplating death. I would say, so the Patanjali Yoga Shastra, Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, which come about in the fourth century, they do sort of have like a precursor to Shavasana. So Patanjali doesn't, he lists 13 poses and none of them are Shavasana. And he also doesn't give any descriptions for his poses. So he does give one pose uh, called Paryankasana. And this in the Buddhist tradition is kind of a meditative seat, what we might call Padmasana. However, Shankara, who's sort of the earliest commentator for Patanjali, says that this pose is lying supine with arms extended towards the knees. Um, and several other commentators confirm this. So there is sort of this precedent for a pose that emulates Shavasana that then becomes, again, as you're asking, sort of it evolves into this metaphorical understanding of death and contemplations on death. I love as you're moving, your camera is going a little bit like a oh, is it? <laughs> It's so fabulous. <laughs> so what happens in modernity as we get closer to our time? What, how does the understanding and the practice of Shavasana shift? Yeah. So in my research, what I'm finding is that the practice takes on these more soteriological, meaning more spiritual, more, you know, salvation oriented approaches, which is kind of a return to that earliest conception in the Dattatreya Yoga Shastra, the Chitalaya, right? Dissolving the mind into the absolute. Um, and so we find BKS Iyengar was a big proponent of Shavasana as this metaphysical pose in which you can die to be reborn. And so that speaks more to the corpse as well, where we're really engaging in this practice of letting go, of surrendering. You know, it takes on all of these metaphors of our time where we need to lay down, we need to rest, we are exhausted, we're depleted, we, you know, there's never enough time. So it really takes on a lot of the metaphors and concerns of our era, which I argue is one of the reasons that the pose is ubiquitous across traditions, right? I don't know of any other pose that you can go into a class, no matter whether it's Ashtanga, Rocket, Yin, Jiva Mukti, 
Pilates and yoga, and you will always practice this one pose. So I think that in modernity, it sort of is this archetypal emblematic pose for all of our collective fears, needs, desires, concerns. Okay. Last question before we move Mm -hmm. to close, what is your Shavasana practice like? Mm, That's a great question. I have always typically had a very mechanic, (laughs) just sort of like a terse as a necessary component. I'm a Mysore Ashtanga yoga practitioner. And so I've always just sort of like laid down, take rest. And it's a couple minutes long. In the last couple of years, I've sort of really wanted to not just cognate intellectually, but embody rest and lying down in a different way. So I actually took a training with your mother this summer. <laughs> and I did your Shavasana intensive, the <laughs> Shavasana intensive online so that I could really learn to embody rest because it's not something that I've been taught. You know, I was raised, if you're lying down, you're not productive and that's a waste of time and that's a waste of energy. So it's a privilege to lie down and take rest and, and we don't, you have to sort of earn it. You have to deserve it. And so I'm sort of actively fighting against that now and taking Shavasana separate from a physical asana practice has been kind of revelatory. Just lying down in Shavasana for the sake of it and because I don't need to deserve it, because it doesn't have to be attached to activity or dynamism or as a counter pose, but just like lying down has actually been pretty transformative. Yeah. It's like a counter pose to your life. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's no stopping otherwise. Erica, it's such a pleasure to be with you. And I love listening to your extremely studied and erudite, articulate way of moving through these topics. Tell us where this authority comes from. Brag a little bit about your (laughs) studies. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I'm currently a master's candidate at SOAS, University of London, and I'm completing my dissertation on Shavasana yoga. Class. On Shavasana, <laughs> she's writing a dissertation on Shavasana. That's, what, that's how we got connected through Erica's wonderful newsletter. Tell people where they can find that. Yeah, that's at yogafolk, Y O G A F O L K dot C O. Okay. Yeah. Where else can people find you on the internet? Yeah. So yogafolk.co is my website. You can find sort of all the other pieces of me there, but more directly, I'm on Instagram at Erica Morton McGill and I have a blog, yogafolk.blog. Fabulous. All right. Well, you you can find me and all my bits, all my (laughs) internet (laughs) lifestyles here at lizzie.yoga. What a pleasure. Thank you so much for being here with us. Namaste. Thank you. Um,